So what's the first step to, to doing one of these? Um, well, on something that's all brand new like this, uh, like the sheet metal is new, all, all of this is all hand built. Um, basically just mocking up all the parts necessary to make the top work and function before the car goes to paint. Um, if it was a convertible top, then you know, if it was a car that already had all this stuff working, you really don't need to do this. This is just, at that point, you would just go back in and replace all the tack strips. Uh, but none of these tack strips have been fitted to this car. So there's probably 12 to 15 bolts that hold the tack strips on around these corners. Uh, so I just need to place those and then drill and either insert a nut insert or drill and tap the body to to be able to hold those tack strips. And what those tack strips do is uh, whenever Laura goes to install the convertible top, you staple the top material to that tack strip and then you bolt that strip into the car. So that holds the tension. This is, this is the foundation for the tension for the top. If this isn't right, and you can't bolt that tight to the car, the top material and everything's gonna be baggy. Um, so this is like basically the foundation that you would wanna start with in building a top. Um, yeah. Get this all mocked up and then, then the car can go to paint after this is all done and then they can go to Laura and then she's gonna make a top for it. You make it sound easy. <laughs> no, I just just done it a time or three. Dalton's our top expert. <laughs> and wiring expert. Yeah. Yeah. He gets all the jobs nobody else wants. <laughs> See like right here, there's no screws in there to hold that drain. So I need to It's got to be screwed up here, but it's got to be angled to where it can drain the water out. Uh, this would be a drain tube that runs down in here and dump the water out onto the ground inside the inner rocker. So, just figuring all that stuff out. This gutter here, if you're driving the car in the rain, you get caught in the rain, and the rain follows the material down. There's a piece of chrome here. That water is meant to go in between that chrome and run down the top and then settle in this gutter. This gutter is one solid piece and then it, deter or it uh, basically routes the water from the rain down into the trunk or down into the quarters and dumps it onto the ground. So that's pretty crucial. I've seen a lot of cars over the years that come in with these are the original drains and then you know, the car sits outside or being stored or whatever, and this is just plastic, so it dry rots. It gets real brittle. And then, you know, you, the next thing you know, your trunk floor is rotting out because the gutter is leaking because it's dry rot and cracked and it's molding the carpet and uh, rotting the car out. So, you don't want that. No. No, it's a, it's a pretty critical piece that kind of gets overlooked by people whenever they're restoring cars.
got some more slack now. A little bit. Still dry, but whenever this thing goes together for our final assembly, I'll put some lube on it, some like PTFE lube. Right now it's good enough. So what's next? Uh, we'll finish routing these hoses and we'll fill the system and then we'll start raising it up. Lower it down. Start testing it? Start testing it. Bleeding all the air out of the system. Gotta make a little, little jumper harness to make the jump box powered up. What kind of oil does this thing use? Uh, ATF. Oh, okay. That looks like a messy job. It can be real quick. That's how you fill these? Yep. A tiny, tiny funnel. A little tiny hole there. Tiny little funnel. He said that's just ATF. Bleed the system first. Um, yeah, you bleed it by um, running the air out of the system. But right now the reservoir is completely full. Uh, I guess they send the pumps full to you, but the rams are all the way down uh, right now, and the lines are empty. So. I'll fire it up and I'll push that fluid out into the rams to start filling the rams. Um, but from what the instructions say, should be a quarter inch off of this seam here, I think. Don't quote me on that, I gotta reread it. But um, whenever this is upright, you take that fill plug out, it should be within a quarter of an inch of this seam here with, uh, with the top down, so meaning the ram is all the way down. What I'm doing. What's up, man? We don't have a battery in this, so we're gonna use a jumper pack. Right. Test the actual movement. Yeah. Get a couple three eighths bolts and just finger tight them. See if we'll raise them lower. Let's see it move. Let's see it move.
that went up higher than that earlier. Does that give me enough reach? top down. Now it's just a matter of raising it up and bleeding all the air out of it. Put it down, bleed it out, fill it up some more. Yeah, it's a, everything a part of this system here is new. The ramp, the yeah, the rams, the lines, the pump, everything's new, so it's going to take a minute. You said on this system, when it's all the way down and the cylinders are compressed? Yeah, that's whenever it's... And you can top everything off. Yeah. A quarter of an inch below the plug. Yeah. Yeah, it goes higher and higher each time. You let it down, it's it's empty again. So as our convertible top expert, would you prefer a hard top or a convertible? <laughs> Depends on the car. And the weather. And the weather. Very much the weather. Um, these bodied Chevelles, I do like these as convertibles. Um, I prefer a hard, hard top though. It never fails. You, no matter how much attention to detail you put into something, putting something together, it seems like convertible tops always have a squeak or a rattle in the top. I think they only look good when they're down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. You live in a warm area and it's not down 90% of the time. Yeah, no, I mean, if we were in Panama City, yeah, I mean, I'd definitely have a convertible Chevelle. She did. She did. burning your head off down there. A nice sun hat cruising the strip. Great success.
I'll see if it goes down. You can tell by the high pitched squeal in the pump that it's still got a little bit of air in it, but. Just going up and down over and over, just kind of works that out? Yeah. And he said this isn't like a brake system, you don't have to get all the air out of these. Right, right. There always seems to be a little bit of air pockets that you see in the lines. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more build videos like this, help us out by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel. And it's a little thing to do, but don't forget to turn on those notifications. If you want to buy merch, go to store.classiccarstudio.com. See you next time.